In this video, we're going to look at some of the DLC sized mods on their way to Fallout 4, as several just got some pretty substantial updates or even announcements around them. We're going to be taking a look at the new Fallout Miami trailer, some details you may have missed in the trailer, some details posted around the mod overall on their own Discord, and although that trailer is epic and awesome, getting a ton of views, some other DLC or expansion or even new game sized mods just recently got updates. We saw some new teaser art from the Fallout 3 remake mod that was Fallout 4 the Capital Wasteland project and a couple of other new announcements that I think you should be very excited for and aren't getting nearly the amount of attention but are on the horizon for Fallout 4's new releases. If you guys enjoy the content you can leave a like or subscribe. User satisfaction is one of the best ways to support this video with the YouTube algorithm and that means watching it and leaving a like or subscribing on the video page. But otherwise let's first take a look at the new trailer from Fallout Miami and if you haven't seen this one it's only two minutes i'll have it linked in the description you should really check it out for yourself as the song and trailer just come together into this really awesome display as to what this team is doing if you're not familiar fallout miami is more or less adding in a post-apocalyptic miami beach as a dlc for fallout 4 and it's an important disclaimer i think a lot of people get caught up with all these dlc sized mods and it can be confusing what each of them is actually trying to do fallout miami is a dlc for fallout 4 you're playing as the same character you play Nate or Nora in Fallout 4 story and is a DLC sized mod not trying to create an entirely new game or something the size of Fallout 4 rather the size of a Fallout 4 DLC. With that said this trailer did a really good job at giving us in-game views of several assets we've seen in the past. On a seasonal basis Fallout Miami gives us big updates in what they're working on so we've seen renders, work in progress images, or even concept art of several things around this mod and with this trailer we're finally seeing a lot of that content come to life different statues or even this Uzi that we've seen concept art and renders of in the past but now actually getting to see it fairly complete in game. They've also clarified the Uzi will be a standalone download in the future. This irradiated golf course is pretty special because it's a piece of concept art we had in the past but now we get to see it for real. The gator claws also just look amazing. I think this trailer captured them better than any of the other ones and we get another look at some other things like the arcade power armor that we saw in the first trailer. One of the things that I think stood out to me that could be missed somewhat here is the variation in landscape you could see in Miami or post-apocalyptic Miami compared to Fallout 4's Commonwealth. Some of the flora you see is just a lot more bright and vibrant. There are definitely different tree models used here. During one phase you could see these chem effects going on on screen. It seems like this will be a main component perhaps connected to the Dreamers faction. We've seen some concept art and lore behind them in the past and more or less they are chem addicted inhabitants of Fallout Miami. Always looking for their next fix and as such I wouldn't be surprised if several newer interesting chems are added, including whatever we have going on here. I've seen a lot of interest around this shotgun. It's actually a downloadable mod right now for Fallout 4. They already released this one as a standalone, but it is a pretty awesome quad barrel shotgun you can get for Fallout 4 in general, as well as this axe is another one they have released as a standalone. Outside of just some of the stuff you saw in the trailer, they posted up a bunch of images of custom swimsuits they are adding with the larger Fallout Miami mod, which do look pretty awesome. I guess you can't really create a Fallout Miami without having a ton of Fallout swimsuits to add with it. On their Discord, they answered a few questions following this trailer, describing how, in addition to the weapons we see here, there will also be weapons from other games making a return to Fallout 4 with this DLC. The protagonist in Fallout Miami will be silent, although it's still going to be voiced in all of the vanilla game, so they're not changing anything about base Fallout 4. Cuban culture definitely has a presence in Fallout Miami and it's not forgotten about with this mod. There's a lot of influence from Cubans and just overall I think this trailer really looks awesome. Fallout Miami has without a doubt some of the coolest mod trailers out of all these larger scale Fallout projects. But speaking of mod projects, we also got some pretty interesting images from Fallout 4 the Capital Wasteland project, that being the Fallout 3 remake mod. Some of you guys may have missed it, but they recently posted some updates around the Point Lookout DLC. Something pretty cool they're doing is actually releasing the Point Lookout DLC first, not the overall remake. So you can play Point Lookout in Fallout 4 earlier than everything else. And they're over halfway done with this at this point. So it's not like it's a pipe dream coming out years in the future, perhaps just a year in the future, even less. But outside of that, they shared with us some pretty iconic weapons, the BB gun making a return. This looks pretty cool. And again, with a lot of the weapons for this mod in particular, they have released them as standalone options. But even in general, I feel like the BB gun is such a staple in Fallout 3 due 
due to that intro quest line that it is just cool to see it make a return. Although what I would say is actually even cooler and in my eyes a bit more memorable, we do have the Mesmatron from Fallout 3 also. This too will be making an appearance in the up and coming Point Lookout DLC they are releasing and it just is one of those very unique or memorable weapons from Fallout 3. If you never got the Mesmatron, it basically mesmerizes other enemies. I remember being a kid and trying to follow guides online on YouTube trying to figure out how to get this one in my own game. So it's always held a pretty special place in my heart so I love seeing these new images of the recreated version for Fallout 4. Outside of that though, something else that's not getting nearly enough attention right now that you definitely should be paying attention to is the upcoming Sim Settlements DLC or really expansion. Sim Settlements right now is one of the craziest mods for Fallout 4 in that Sim Settlements by itself is awesome, a huge improvement over the settlement system, but it has now released three expansions that do build upon that in pretty significant ways. Conqueror in particular gives you a totally separate way to play Fallout 4, creating your own faction, creating outposts or even military bases around the map, taking over or going to war with other factions in Fallout 4, and even adding in its own storyline as an additive to Fallout 4 is almost an alternate evil route you can go with taking down Preston Garvey. It's huge and an awesome addition, but they're adding something even a bit bigger. They just recently released this trailer, which is simply titled Teaser, barely shares any information, but we can make some inferences from. You can see a remade ASAM sensor and in the background with the audio there is a Robco ad playing and the major takeaway at the end where death conquered us we will build again. It's not totally clear what this is but it definitely seems like some kind of invading force into Fallout 4 as an expansion to sim settlements. Now based on that boot and based off some of the context it certainly seems like this could be an enclave return of some kind or maybe even something around the gunners. The gunners of course are already pretty well represented within sim settlements so I wouldn't be shocked if it's something a bit different. Even zombies have been tossed around considering literally death conquered them. Either way, one of the reasons to get excited is it's described by Kingath himself on a different video that this is going to be something bigger than anything else they've built. And considering the size and scope of Conqueror, basically giving you a totally different way to play Fallout 4, this is huge. And also with Sim Settlements expansions in general, they tend to post these teasers or start revealing and talking about it fairly close to when it's actually coming out. It's been described how this one may only be a couple of months away, so it's not like it's going to be coming out in mid-2021 or towards the end of 2021, but we could see it in just the next few months or in the earlier part of 2021. So again, we don't know a ton about this, we just have this teaser to go off of, but considering what the Sim Settlements team has done thus far, and considering this is apparently the biggest project yet, it is definitely something to keep an eye on to look forward to. I know I for one am very excited for it. It's going to be one of those releases that is almost certainly worth reinstalling or starting a new playthrough for. But speaking of mods worth reinstalling for, we also do have a trailer for the Whispers of, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that one. What this is going to be is a horror or Lovecraftian themed DLC for Fallout 4. And that name may seem familiar because there already was kind of a first part released for Fallout 4. So you could download that right now if you want to get into this world. That in above itself is an awesome horror or scary themed mod. But also having some pretty cool new elements added into the game and some unique rewards. But this follow up is described as being much larger and even just from the trailer. see they're definitely doing a good job at upping the fear factor. It's described how quite a few custom assets will be added for this. New weapons being twice the size at least of the first iteration and being a more proper DLC sized experience. It's not clear exactly when this is coming out at some point before the end of 2020 but it definitely looks like it's going to be a definitive option in the scary mod scene. I'm also looking forward to the fact that it looks like this will be more of kind of a questing experience. The past mod was like that where it's not necessarily adding in a ton of miscellaneous things to do in Fallout 4, but one defined experience, an adventure to go on where you actually uncover things, you do some quests. There's a lot of mods, adding in zombies to the game, and this one taking a bit of a different approach but also having that fear factor is a nice change of pace, and for that reason I'm pretty excited to add it to my load order, especially the scary load orders. Then we also do have Fallout 4 Project Cathedral. This is going to be a new quest mod coming to the game with a very notable location added with it, that with this giant cathedral and even 
some surrounding outskirt areas. Not a ton is known about what exactly the questing aspect of this will be. We've had some images of new enemies added in, and it's more or less described how there'll be a couple of quests designed around this particular cathedral, heavily inspired from the cathedral in past Fallout games. And overall, it's looking pretty cool. Definitely a notable and memorable location. One of the interesting aspects of this is it's large in part using many vanilla assets from Fallout 4, and it's doing those vanilla assets quite a bit of justice, making it look really cool, really custom, but also staying pretty true to form to other stuff you've seen in Fallout 4. Overall, another one of those mods to keep on your radar that is on the horizon. But speaking of, something else we got some pretty big updates around is wars for Fallout 4. So here you can see the M1911 that will be added in by this mod, and in particular, a ton of the customization options that will be shipped with it, several of which are pretty crazy, whether it be kind of a machine pistol variant or even just some longer barrel or silenced options. If you're not familiar with wars, it basically is trying to overhaul the weapon options in Fallout 4, taking out some of the familiar like things like the 10mm, but replacing them all with better alternatives. And then just in general, adding in a ton of additional options, like we see here with the M1911. This actually looks pretty cool. I love mods like this that really embrace the customization aspect of Fallout 4, and even sometimes giving you some more outlandish options as far as how you want to customize your weapons. But overall, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. I tried to give you updates on some of the larger scale mods coming to Fallout 4, and I should have some more in the future. I am planning a big video on my almost yearly update now on all of the big DLC sized mods on their way, so you could kind of get a status update as to where they all stand and what they've done over the past year or so. As always again, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.